for Howard Dean, uh, who was really the pioneer of online organizing, was one of the first politicians who wanted to use these types of online tools to try to rally uh, a group of people around him. And he was using sites like meetup.com and uh, message boards to try to gain support. Now, unfortunately for him, while he was very successful in building up a huge online community, he was unable to translate that online community into offline support, and he ended up losing. So the Obama campaign, building on the knowledge that, that Howard Dean had, had created, really wanted to make sure that they didn't fall in the same strategic trap. Yes, an online community was great. Yes, it was powerful. But we wanted to make sure that on November 4th, people were going out to vote and that there was a huge component of physical offline action. So the one strategic nugget that was built into everything that the campaign did was this idea that online organizing would have to equal offline action. Every time you interacted with us online, it would be part of, uh, part of a process that would eventually try to convert that online activity into something offline, because at the end of the day, while it was really great to form groups on Facebook and blog about Obama and tweet about Obama, it was the traditional activities that were really the most value-adding, which remained knocking on doors, making phone calls, excuse me, making phone calls and donating money. So here's how they executed on this idea. The first way was through email, which was a very powerful tool. And it was one of the most common ways that people kept in touch with the campaign. You would actually be very surprised to note at how many people received an email from Barack Obama and really truly believed that he had written just them a private email. And we would get responses back into our general inbox saying things like, you know, dear Barack, thank you so much for letting me know how the campaign was going. I know you must be really busy, but I really appreciate being kept in the loop. And it was this great way for people to, to form relationships with him. Over the course of the campaign, we sent over one billion emails out. And one of the ways we continued to build relationships with people using these tools was through a technique called hypersegmentation. Now, hypersegmentation, very simply, is sending targeted messages to certain groups of our voters. We sent them messages based on their location because each email that was location-based had links to grassroots or organizing activities that were happening in their neighborhoods, so making that push to offline action easier. We sent them emails based on the issues that they had said were important to them. So if they said they were interested in education versus healthcare versus foreign policy or social services, we sent them information that contained our stances on those particular topics. And again, people were much more likely to get up and be motivated and be passionate if they were receiving information about causes that they cared about. And finally, we segmented based on um, donation history. So if you donated uh, $25 to the campaign, you were not going to receive an email the next day saying, why don't you donate $25? We wanted to respect our community and we wanted to make sure that they understood that every donation, no matter how small, was helping and was, an and was having an impact. So ultimately, in terms of converting a lot of this online activity into offline action, we have these things that I call the ask versus the nudge. We asked a lot of our high engagement users, the people that were plugged into our campaign, we asked them to do all sorts of things. We asked them to make hundreds of phone calls every week. We asked them to host dozens of events in a month. We asked them to knock on doors and collect data and to volunteer. We sent an email out to all of our highly engaged users on November 4th, giving them the names of five people who lived in their neighborhood that they didn't know. And we said, make sure these five people get to the polls. This was the type of commitment that we were expecting. It was quite intimidating for a lot of people that had never really engaged with a political campaign before. For those people, we had something called a nudge. A nudge is a very small digital action uh, that is easy to do, easy to complete, and that just gets your feet wet, just gets them engaged with us, and eventually acts as a gateway to convert into offline action. So instead of telling them, call 25 strangers, we said, call one person that you know and tell them about Obama. Instead of saying donate $25, we said donate $5. And what we saw was that this gateway, by getting them in the door digitally in a very easy way, converted them into high engagement users. The one person that made one phone call came back and made five, and then 10, and then 20, and then hosted an event, and then became a precinct captain, and eventually converted from a one digital step into this highly engaged offline participant. And it was key in continuing to, to gain momentum by funneling all of our audience 
through this engagement scale. And this was one of the ways that was really key in converting that online enthusiasm into actual offline action.